From Bakersfield to the corners of Kern County, the best moments from your Golden Empire Gridirons. 17 Sports Director Taylor Shaw, Football Analyst, Renegade Head Coach R. Todd Littlejohn. This is FFX, the Sunday Expanded Edition. Driven by Sangara Subaru and Dignity Health, Mercy and Memorial Hospitals. We're back, Coach. We're back. <laughs> Welcome into the Sunday Expanded Edition of FFX. I'm Taylor Schaap. Joining me, as always, is head coach of the Renegades, R. Todd Littlejohn. Now, the Friday night lights are back. So, Coach, what's it time for? It's time to give the people what they want. Gather around. It's time for your FFX Game of the Week. Powered by SCOE, your Southern California Orthopedic Institute. Well, Coach, it's not often that we get to start our year with the number one quarterback in the country, but that was the case over at Garces. Rams head coach Paul Gola is known for scheduling tough tests right out of the gate, but Friday night, he outdid himself. The Rams welcoming the number one recruit in the nation, future USC quarterback Malachi Nelson. Nelson comes into his senior season at Los Al as the reigning Gatorade Player of the Year and the Griffins would strike first. Nelson easily finds Gavin Porch, coach. Starts off and empty, throws a great pass out to the, out to the open field and you saw what happened. 24 yards and the score is seven zip just like that. Now Nelson dishes it to Ethan O'Connor. This is 50 yards and look how fast this man runs. Well, I tell you, they got a great group of uh, skilled players and it makes it a little bit easier for him. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're going to go to the second now, 21 zip Griffins. And Nelson with his fourth TD of the night. <laughs> I mean, there's so much room out there. It's an ocean. No doubt. I'm not sure he even yeah, broke a sweat in this game. <laughs> well, like we said, it's not often that you see the number one player in the nation in Bakersfield, but you did. Los Al, Blanks, Garces, no surprises there. 41 zip. Let's take a look at Nelson's final stat line in this one, coach, because it was absolutely ridiculous yes it is that that's like video game numbers when you play a, a team with with that that much talent you, there's there's no uh, room for error and we had a we had minor mistakes I mean honestly you, you watch the film and it was like one one person with a bad angle one but but at the end of the day you know that that's how you get beat so I'm, I'm excited our kids competed all four quarters um, and hopefully we watch film and this isn't a, a deal where anybody's gonna get yelled at it's a deal where hey we got to learn from this. this is why we did this is because we want to be at that level. Well, Coach, over in Southwest Bakersfield, the Liberty Patriots were following up their first state championship appearance with a rematch against Spanish Springs. Liberty took care of last season's season opener, 28-3. That was the final Patriots looking to do the same at home. Cougars had other plans. J.J. Dane finds Nate Penny cash money right there, 7-zip. And then it was all Liberty, Coach. Hey, they picked up where they left off, and as you see, they got playmakers in abundance. Jalen Hankins goes up the gut, 10-7, just like that. Then it's Hankins again. This kid's a stud for Brian Nixon. Yes, he is. We talked a lot about him last year, and obviously he's, uh, he's starting off the season well. 35 yards, 17-7. How about a little passing play? Jace Nixon, the son of head coach Brian Nixon, to Trey Fulton. How about that? I'm sure he says something to his dad after the game. <laughs> this thing was a route, 58-17. Hankins, 121 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Let's hear from Brian Nixon. I really love the intensity of our kids. They came out and played really hard. That was the best part for us is they came out, they flew around. We got 11 guys the ball defensively, offense. We got off the ball well. You know, it was a good test for us to start and uh, really pleased with how they started. All right, BHS, St. Clovis, taking on an uber-talented Buchanan team headline by Fresno State commit Jaden Mandall at quarterback. The senior was recently named to the preseason All-State second team by Cal High Sports. Coach, you can see why. Definitely can see why. See these uh, poison under pressure, throws a great ball at the end of that play. So, Buchanan would absolutely dominate in this ball game. One of the reasons why, Tybo Rogers did not play in this game. And you can tell when you lose your best weapon, Coach, it's hard to win a ball game, especially against there, the Bears. There's no question about that. You need all your, your best players on the field and obviously against an opponent like this at a show. All right, Rashawn Sheehy would like to forget about this one. Another big game over at South. Wasco coming off a perfect regular season last year in a playoff upset over Centennial. Would the Tiger magic continue in 2022? Well, the Spartans offense was locked in early in this one. Look at Shane Carr just grabbing, snagging that 20 yards for the score, seven zip south, but then the grounded pound coach of Wasco's offense. 
Well, I tell you, they, they continue to perfect this thing, and it is so, so effective in these games like this. Chad Martinez, he's got something working over at Wasco, but Shane Carr's got something working too. Look how fast he's going there, coach. I see that. He's, he's a very good looking young man, good tall uh, athlete, and he's gonna give people problems this year. All right, Wasco would battle back from the 11 point deficit. It's Michael Dominguez, the game winner, the drama. Football's back, this is what football is all about. You know, I was uh, happy to come out uh, with the victory. This one went down to the final second, but Wasco football still booming. In Visalia, new quarterback Adam Campos led the Centennial Golden Hawks to a 28-21 road victory over Redwood. Geehawks head to the coast Friday for a date with Arroyo Grande. Still ahead on FFX, the Eagles soar past Mission Prep. How David Carr's offense picked up where it left off last fall and what to expect from BCHS in week two. Plus, it's time for the first installment of Taylor's Trivia. Tonight, we're asking what was the last Kern County school to win a state championship? The answer when we return. You're watching FFX, the Sunday Expanded Edition, powered by Sangara Subaru, serving Kern County for over 50 years. You're watching FFX, the Sunday Expanded Edition, powered by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. All right, welcome back. If you guessed BCHS, you were correct. That's right, Bakersfield Christian, the last school to win a state championship. Now, Coach, speaking of the Eagles, Mission Prep, they flew inland to the nest. They were taking on Bakersfield Christian. Let's go out to the gridiron. Jordan Delgado to Nathan Perez. That means fast. Get it to your playmakers right now, and you see what happens. Speedy, 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 14-0. All right, Bryson Waterman now takes the QB spot and keeps it. We saw how good his brother was last year at quarterback. Could we see a repeat? There is a potential of that, yes, I would imagine. Here's the deal with BCHS. Their offense, absolutely electric. Schemed by a former NFL quarterback, so you kind of expect big numbers. 35 to 9, that's your final in this one. All right, Thursday night lights now. Highland Scots coming off a deep playoff run. They're facing stiff competition in Stockdale. First quarter, Stockdale strikes first. It's quarterback Isaac Herrera calling his own number, taking it in for the 10-yard score. It's seven zip stings. Scott's counter. Coach, who is it? Jojo Mata. Jojo Mata. We said his name quite a bit last year. Sounds like we'll repeat that this year. That's 15 yards in for the score. The Scots would pour it on from there. They take it 24-14. We told our guys at the beginning of the year that with this new league, we were going to have some challenge. We had to prove that we belonged there, and our line did a great job of stepping up. I mean, they, they really just moved, moved the ball for us, um, responded the whole game. We had so many guys playing both ways, so we couldn't be prouder of them. Frontier has some big aspirations coming into 2022. Coming off that COVID plague 2021, that included a D2 semifinal appearance. They thought they could go just a little further. And, well, Chris Bandy's group sure made the North Stars feel the wrath of the Titans. That was an okay movie. This was a better game. Early second, Titans stringing a drive together. Running back Ladon Herrera takes the plunge, puts the Titans on the board. The junior scores Frontier's first touchdown of the season, 35-13. That's your final. And after playing two seasons on the road, the Shafter Generals are getting sent to unveil a state-of-the-art new stadium, but the Road Warriors, as coach we've come to know them, well, they would have to wait a little bit. All right, Shafter only starting four seniors this season. Coach, wow, that's not a lot of leadership. Not at all, but you know, they got tradition, so I'm sure those guys will step up. That's a senior right there. His name's Koa Rhodes, and he was very, very good in this ball game, Coach. Man, already another Swiss Army knife they can use. We told you, Koa Rhodes, get familiar with that name because he's slipping past the defense. Yes, he is, and he got great vision, great patience right there to, to get that uh, touchdown. All right, this was a dominating victory. 46-6. Alright coach, let's whip around the county now. So many games, such little time. Here's the rest of the action from week one. We had some Thursday night football in Bear Country. Chavez running the ball down Arvin's throat. Up 14 zip Nathan Fernandez from the red zone to the end zone. He had 80 yards on 12 touches and that TD in the first half alone. Titans blinked the Bears 26 zip. Friday, the Falcons flew over to the coast. Indy coming off a state championship appearance scoreless in the fourth when new quarterback Diego Hernandez calls his own number. Indy holds on, beats Pioneer Valley 7 zip. Kennedy taking on Edison in Fresno 
Fresno scoreless in the second until Tigers quarterback Yonge Vance finds Marcus Watkins, the wideout, breaking several tackles on his way home. Kennedy gave up 371 yards in the air as Edison takes it 20 to 13. Ridgeview suffering a similar fate in nearby Clovis. Late second, already down 30 0 to the Golden Eagles. Safety Markel Sanders making sure the shutout stays intact. That looks like it hurt. Clovis West dominates 42 zip. Back in Bakersfield, the Blades battled to the bitter end. Start of the second half, Lorenzo Patino puts East up eight, capping off a long drive with that four yard score. But Santa Maria would storm back, winning 24 14. Delano taking on Miramonte. Tigers quarterback Eddie Silva was 12 of 18 for 174 yards and four touchdowns, including this dime. Tigers take it 34 29. Sunnyside visiting Golden Valley. Bulldogs up 14 early, but the Wildcats would storm back. Tanner Wilson finds Malachi Barnes, who does the rest. Sunnyside takes it 50-27. In the high desert, Isaiah Morgan led Boron to a surprise shutout over Foothill. The running back had 163 yards on the ground in the game's only score. Speaking of shutouts, Taft's defense limited Kern Valley to 28 yards of total offense, blanking the Bronx. 29 zip. And Tehachapi had a tour de force performance in Ridgeview, crushing Burroughs 52 0. While McFarlane got shut out by Avenal 35 zip. That's a look around the county from week one of the high school football season. All right, coach, that was a look around the county. Now, coming up, your renegades. That's right, they are chomping at the bit for the regular season to start. A look at the quarterback battle brewing over in BC. <laughs> That's next on FFX. FFX is proud to be fitted by Finos. When it comes to quality men's suits in Bakersfield, Finos men's wear and tuxedo is all you need. Huddle up. It's time for Coach's Corner with Renegade Head Football Coach R. Todd Littlejohn. Oh man, it's time for Coach's Corner, that's right. This is your segment, Coach, and we're talking everything high school football. And one of the biggest topics is ref shortages. We have 31 Thursday night games this year. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. You know, in a, in a traditional year, obviously you wouldn't have it like that. And it's unfortunate that you the games have to be altered a little bit to accommodate uh, the lack of officials. And, you know, hopefully that'll, it'll um, smooth itself out throughout the course of the year. But, you know, it is what it is. And, and uh, teams have had to overcome adversity already and due to the pandemic. So this shouldn't be anything different. Okay, I know that it affects tradition, but losing an extra day of rest, does that right. hurt? It could, you know, and depending on how you prepare yourself, um, it could always hurt. But you have to make adjustments, and I think this game, as we know as coaches, you have to make adjust adjustments. you got to be able to adapt and, and be flexible, so it's unfortunately just another uh, obstacle. All right, my next question. We saw Los Al play Garces. That is a really, really tough matchup. Obviously, BHS playing Buchanan up north. I want to know the pros and cons of scheduling a very tough test right out of the gate. The pros are you see what uh, what you have, you know, and, and trying to identify um, obviously the level and, and how you stack up, so to speak. The negatives, of course, is it, it, the scores can get, um, you know, they can get out of, yeah. out of hand and, and uh, you don't know if that discourages your team for the for, uh, you know, for the season. But again, it just depend on depends on your approach to it and then your approach after it and the mindset moving forward. All right, it's time for Renegade Report here on FFX. Coach, we're talking about the 2020 edition of the BC Renegades. Now, I know that you guys have a quarterback battle brewing at camp. What, eight guys? <laughs> yeah, you know, one of our main focuses was to bring in some competition, and uh, we felt like we needed that. We needed to upgrade at the position, and we'll see what happens. You know, it's, it's been a great battle so far, and uh, whomever, you know, the young men that, that do end up playing, will, they will have earned it. All right, September 3rd, L.A. Pierce. What can you tell us about that game? It's all about us. You know, we minimize our turnovers. We force some fumbles and we, we, we no stupid penalties. I, I believe that uh, we'll, we'll be ready to roll. All right, it's time to break out your Sunday best. The FFX Awards are next.
WFFX is proud to partner with Valley Sports Media. Follow at V Sports Media for exclusive football content throughout the season. It's trophy time. The FFX Awards, brought to you by Jerry's Pizza and Pub. Welcome back. Week one provided so many highlight worthy moments. It's really hard to choose just one, but that's the job. It's time to hand out some hardware. That's right, your FFX play of the week right now. And for those of you who didn't know, my friend Coach Little John over there, well, he used to be a special teams coordinator at the D1 level, so I thought we would pick a <laughs> special teams play just for you. Let's go ahead and queue up our first ever FFX play of the week. All right, Coach, it's Sean Kizzy. He had back-to-back -back punt returns. Man, you got to love it because... You know, special teams are such a crucial part of the game and shows right now that they are taking very seriously and got a great player like that to be helped. You know what's funny is Coach Brian Nixon, he's always talking about every facet of the game. We have to be great on every facet of the game. And it seems like they are better than everybody in special teams. They take it very serious. And again, we, we know how crucial special teams is if you start the game with it. All right, that's your FFX play of the week. Your FFX Player of the Week is presented by Vertical Raise, the premier online fundraising platform. All right, Coach, it's time for our favorite segment of the show. That's right, we're crowning our Week 1 King, our FFX Player of the Week. His name, Koa Rhodes. He plays for the Shafter Generals. He's a senior, and he had five touchdowns this week. That's pretty impressive, Koa. How does it feel to be the first FFX Player of the Week? Uh, you know, it feels great. You know, I, I appreciate it. I feel like it's an honor. And so I'm just happy I could be a part of it. But Based upon your performance, looks like you got another weapon to add to the, uh, to the arsenal. Yeah, well, it's not just me. I know our offensive line has done a lot for us. You know, they pushed the line up front and created gaps for me to run through. So all props goes to them. All right, it was a huge week one performance, but I know all eyes are when you guys return to the Shafter Stadium, the new one with that new beautiful scoreboard. What's it going to be like to play at home again? I'm excited. I haven't played since my freshman year. You know, we've been COVID year. We had no home games last year, no home games. And so now to be able to play on the field, my first varsity game on, you know, on our field. So it's going to feel great. I'm excited. Well, normalcy in the stands, the stadium back at Shafter, it's going to be an incredible experience. Koa Rhodes, our FFX Player of the Week for Week 1, and that's going to do it for this first expanded edition of FFX. For more high school football coverage, just head over to KGT.com and click on that FFX icon, and you'll see us next Friday at 11.11. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.